Okay. So, hello. My name is Phelan. I'm uh, from the European Commission. Before that, I'm from, I'm from Ireland. Um, I work in DG Energy. So, um, um, I'm just thinking while I'm here, I'm going to try and take a step back because I'm used to presenting in Brussels where it's kind of a different audience. You are very familiar with the institutions. But I thought it might be helpful to take a little bit, step, take a little bit of a step back. So, um, I'm from the European Commission, which is one of the three institutions of the EU, one of the three main institutions. And the Commission is the institution that um, is the most, I'd say, academic of the three institutions. So when it comes to developing a lot of the strategies or developing a lot of the regulations, we do a lot of the, the groundwork for, for what goes into those texts. Um, I've been asked today to present on two main things. One is on the, the latest strategy to come out of the, the European Commission, which is the, 20, the 2050 strategy. And the other thing is Horizon Europe, which is the next uh, framework program for research and, and innovation. Uh, but I'd like to start first with the strategy because it came out last week. Um, out of interest, how many people here have heard of the, of the, the latest 2050 strategy, A Clean Planet for All? And how many people have not heard of it? Okay, I'm kind of testing how many people can understand me here at the same time. <laughs> um, so the, the 2050s strategy is, it's a little bit of a misnomer. So it's, it's, a, it's actually a proposal for a strategy. So a year ago, in, in line with COP, uh, the climate negotiations, the, the council asked the commission to produce a proposal for a strategy. Not a strategy itself, but a proposal for a strategy. So this document that came out last week is a vision for what the future energy economy could look like going towards 2050, but it's not necessarily what it should look like, or is it by any means what it will look like. Look like. So what are the, 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 the main takeaways for this 2050 strategy for here, I think is that buildings are really at the forefront of it. It has seven, well, se seven building blocks. They're not all about buildings, but there are seven building blocks. And the first one is energy efficiency and near zero energy buildings, which I think uh, in the framework of this EU Google project is pretty good news. Um, for me, the, the, the strategy has a lot of the typical things you would see in a strategy. But also importantly is that there's, there's a lot of electrification in it and there's a, a big emphasis on things like hydrogen and CCUS, so carbon capture, use, storage and utilization, which are not ne necessarily proven technologies yet, but they're, they're seen as being a big aspect of the future. But in a year's time from now, after further negotiation with the council and the parliament, we should hopefully have an actual strategy that we should be able to bring to COP and this will be part of the, the national contributions to the, the whole COP framework. COP at the moment, I, I'm not sure how many people are following the news on COP. It's not looking great this week. We see uh, the United States, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, um, all, and Russia all potentially pulling out. So the future is a little bit uncertain, but the Commission will go ahead with the strategy, and we hope to have a strategy next year. Okay, so that covers the first part of my presentation. Uh, the, sec the second part is a little bit more closer to home. Um, this is on Horizon Europe. So this is what my unit within the Commission deals with on. My, my unit is, we deal with new energy technologies, but we specifically deal with the research and innovation funds of the European Commission. And when you mention research and innovation funds to one of my colleagues, the first thing we'll think of is Horizon Europe. Um, but before I start, what I'd like to say is, so the EU Google project that you'll hear about today is part of the last framework program, it's called FP7. Now we have the current fra framework program, it's called Horizon 2020, and the next one is called Horizon Europe. So I'd like to caveat what I'm about to say by starting with this, this, this rhino. Does anybody know what this rhino is? 
Okay, usually there's one person who knows. So this, this rhino is a, a drawing of a rhino that Albert Dürer, a famous uh, German painter, did in, as you can see, in the 1500s. And it was a drawing that he did of a rhino based on a description he was given of what a rhino looked like. So he had never actually seen a rhino before, but he drew it based on what someone else told him it looked like. So it doesn't exactly look really like a rhino, but it's similar. And my presentation's a bit like that, because it's on Horizon Europe. It doesn't yet exist, and I'm giving you a presentation based on what I've been told look, it'll look like, but it might look a little bit different. Um, so to start off, the, the good news is within Horizon Europe is that the, the fund is expected to increase. It's seen as, the fund is essentially 10% of EU funds. The overall EU budget is about a trillion, and this is 100 billion. It was 70, million for the la 70 billion for the last period, and it'll go up to 100 billion. And it has some broad overarching goals, which is to strengthen the EU's scientific and technological basis, to boost Europe's innovation capacity, and to deliver, to deliver on citizens' priorities, and sustain our socio-economic models and values. These are all very typical, broad European goals. They're, you can't criticize them, you, you can't do the opposite. Um, here's just a little visual representation of that same increase along with some other budgets. But the, the main message is that it's increasing. I, if, I, if, I, if I go to kind of a Spanish perspective for a second, I think what's interesting here is that because it's the, because it's the research and innovation fund, it's really the fund for high-end research. So EU Google would be seen as a very forward-looking project. It's not a typical renovation project. It's a project that's really testing different technologies. So what we typically see within this fund is, is that we see Germany and the United Kingdom really coming out on top and, earning most, and winning most of the bids. So here you see what countries are winning the most bids of Horizon Europe. And this is, <coughs> it's, it's not really ideal. We, we don't want to see Germany and the United King, Kingdom winning all the bids. But possibly an upside of Brexit, if I, if I may say so, maybe I'm slightly biased here being Irish, but not being Irish from the perspective of people in this room, is that when you consider the budget increase um, going from 70 to 100 billion and that the UK will most likely be leaving, they may not, we hope they stay, but that the, the overall budget of Horizon essentially doubles when you take out the second highest performing member state and a budget increase. So from, a, from someone who's applying for projects in Horizon Europe, I, I think it's just doubled in how attractive it should be. If there was one graph to show the overall, and the, the overall change that I could show of how the EU is changing since, it's, since it started would be this graph. So here you have essentially the four main funding streams of the EU. You have at, at the top going from 60% in the, in, the, in the 1990s down to 30% looking towards 2020 is the Agricultural Policy Fund. So this is money that goes to farmers. It, it by and large has been a difficult fund and it's declining. The, the other main fund is the Economic, Social and Territorial Cohesion Funds. This is your, uh, if I'll just change for a moment, but I'll go back. This is your classical regional funding. This is the money that goes from kind of the wealthy member states and gets redistributed to the less performing regions of Europe, which is to bring the overall European economy together. That, that stays essentially the same. You see other, programmings, other programs really rising fast, and this is partly to do with Horizon Europe. And then the the budget for public administration stays approximately the same. But again, good news for people who are involved already in FP7 projects, Horizon 2020 projects, is that the Commission is aiming to have more of these because they're performing well. So if we look at, if we look at then this overall budget within research and innovation, we're looking for a budget that protects, empowers, and defends this is a little bit of the, the, new, the new wording, considering that there'll be a defense budget. But also we see a 35% budget target for 
for climate change. So 35% of the budget should go towards climate related projects. And then this will feed into the, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Um, I, personally, I've, I've, I find this pretty interesting. Here we see a graph in the bottom left where we see how other major economies, um, how much they invest their percentage of GDP in research and innovation. And at the moment, the EU is, I think, surprisingly very far behind. We see the United States, Korea, Japan, all investing much more of their GDP in research and innovation. So the EU is trying to, to target that and invest more. Where the, where, where the EU is really strong is in academia. We only have, we only have a 7%, so less than one-tenth of the world's population, but we have a third of all high-quality scientific publications. So this is, again, another area that the, the EU hopes to support, but we want to translate it into really to helping businesses and helping companies. At the moment, if we look at, uh, say, unicorn startups, these are startups that reach a valuation of a billion dollars in one year, Europe has, I think, one-fifth of the amount that America does. So this graph is essentially trying to show the, the, the slight difference between EU funding and, and national funding. The EU funding is always aiming at um, doing transnational cooperation and bringing different partners with the EU together. The, they, the EU really doesn't want to replicate national funding. So, so one thing we often get when we're looking at proposals for projects is that people will come to us and ask us, um, we have a project, say, <clears throat> say, in Spain, and we have five Spanish partners, and we believe that what we do with these five Spanish partners will be of relevance to all across Europe, and that's why we haven't picked five partners from around Europe, because we, we have everything here to share the knowledge. When we're evaluating proposals, or when rather when independent evaluators are evaluating, evaluating for us, they're, they're always going to give preference to projects that have partners from all around the place. So in order to, to get all these different aspects of added value, one recommendation what I have is to always look for partners from around Europe, which is again something that the EU Google project has done, Stardust has also done, and I'm sure is a big factor in why they were picked. Also, you'll be happy to know for those who are already involved in FP7 projects, Horizon 2020 projects, is that it's a, we say it's an evolution, not a revolution. So it'll stay largely the same. Um, people who have been applying and who are used to societal clusters will, will be seeing the same things again in the future. There's, there's no big changes. And I can say from the, the inside perspective at DG Energy, when we're looking at funding now for 2019 and 2020, we're, as policy officers on the ground, we're really trying to not change things too much. We know people have been applying to these projects, they're getting to know the projects, they've already submitted proposals, and we're just trying to relocate the budget towards the final years so that they can apply again without changing the whole scene too much. Because we know that from, from a distance it can be very confusing when the Commission keeps changing things. So these are, the, uh, these are the overall, this is the overall budget split into pillars. Here I'll go just through a little bit uh, the wider view and narrow it down between the, th the different thematic topics within Horizon Europe. So the, pi the pillars are a little bit different in their height. You have open science, global challenges and competitiveness and open innovation are the three main pillars. The, the global challenges one and competitiveness is the, is by far the biggest. And then Breaking it down again within this second pillar, the largest one, we see approximately 15 billion going to climate, energy, and mobility, which I think would probably be the most relevant for people here in the room. Again, here a little further breakdown of the themes and the topics. Uh, I'll share this presentation afterwards for anyone who wants to dig into it a little bit more. There's, there's no need to really go into it now. And again, the, the budget breakdown for the thematic topics. I'll, I'll finish up by quickly covering two new things in Horizon Europe. So just to maybe to put it to the, 
to the back of your mind so when you hear it again in, in a year's time that it, it's, it doesn't sound too unusual. There's, 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 if you look at the top right here, the European Innovation Council and the RNI missions, these are, these are two new things that the Commission is, is intending to promote a lot in the next programming period. So the first one is the European Innovation Council. This is really for, it's going towards, it's really individuals. So it's maybe young, uh, advanced researchers who have an idea. The, the commissions and the, all the institutions is gonna try and support them more to get them really funding early on in their careers and give them support all the way through um, to help the, the Elon Musk of this world and people like that. And the other one is the RNI missions. And this is um, kind of bold, overarching, aspirational goals that then projects can come forward with and have their own solutions. So again, here the commission won't be too prescriptive. It won't say, we think you should do this, this, and this in order to reach uh, an end target. The commission will just say, here is the end target. We are open to proposals for how to get there. And the, the classic example here is trying to put a man on the moon. Again, this is just a general overview of the different, uh, different funds. Also a big thing in the next funding program is will be blending of funds. So you'll be, it'll be easier to apply for one fund and perhaps get maybe a 60% co-financing rate and then mix that with another fund in order to reach the full fund. That's something that, that, is, that will be encouraged and not discouraged. This is just, um, this is more of a kind of a, a background for the, the process as to how the, the plans are developed. Okay, but that pretty much finishes it up. So for, in terms of what now, the things broadly stay the same. These, are, these would be the main areas within uh, the current topic that the Commission is promoting, and they will stay the same for 2020. So calls for 2019 will be opening mostly in around February, and then again, February of the following year, 2020, will be open before going to Horizon Europe. Um, that being said, the Commission is still very open to, to, to feedback on how we can change the goals. We, can, we, won't, we won't be changing anything substantially, but we'll be making uh, kind of small changes to the text. And we know now, having looked at the program for a long time, uh, that, that people have been raising some some, uh, some doubts about some of the projects and that some of the projects have been, in the proposals, have been, say, overly ambitious and having been promising too many deliverables. And at the end of the project, sometimes they're not delivered. So that's one area which we're looking into now is to see how the Commission can change text to, to give all projects kind of a fairer application stage and then a fairer delivery stage. So, that's what I'm looking forward to a bit in the panel. If anyone has ideas on how the Commission can improve, I'm really an open target, and please give me as much feedback as you can. And that finishes it up. Okay, thanks very much.